In today's video, we're going to go over some more creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. Did you see what Jeff Bezos is building I in Texas? Right dude, now. Clocks, you got to talk about it, dude. It's too trippy. It's weird. It's It makes no sense. I don't understand why you're spending, what is it, $4 million? No, $42 million. $42 million. Uh, Golly, Jeff dude. Bezos has spent $42 million building a clock inside of a mountain that he says will outlast humanity. Why? So it's mountain time? It's a doomsday thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I never know which one that one is. Is he just like, in case the world ends, you guys should probably have a clock? I don't know. Maybe it's does, like his own timer. Does yeah. he know that we could tell time before we had clocks? No, we can't. Yeah, but we can do that. <laughs> so what's the point of that? Dude, $42 there, there million. To, dollars. There's something weird with it. That's for sure. 110%. They like They dug this tunnel literally at the top of this mountain, and this thing is like stories tall with all these mechanisms and just runs it's like the most accurate clock and he says that it'll outlast humanity scary maybe he, it's like a timer for something oh i have a feeling 42 million dollars is like four dollars and 20 cents to jeff bezos it blows my mind on how much money these people spend on useless things like this is cool don't get me wrong i think that is a neat idea to have a clock that'll last the end of time it's probably going to make people question way off in the future where it even came from it's probably going to be a forgotten history that gets discovered and people are going to be like aliens <laughs> just to spend so much money on something like that when you could literally provide for a whole country to live prosperously off of it just kind of hurts me a little bit you know the brown-eyed people are inherently connected to either one or both of the elements that I'm going to name um, right now. So it's an earth connection and it's a fire element connection. If you have brown eyes, you may have one or both of these connections that are very ingrained with who you are, both at soul level, but most specifically in this incarnation. So your soul, of all the different menu options available to it, chose for you to have a connection to earth or fire or both of these elements in your current um, incarnation if you have brown eyes. What does it mean? The fire element connection has always to do with life force, right? So um, your higher self had plans for you to be quite active. People with brown color are meant to be quite active. Now, they may be active in different ways, right? So there's usually a calling to be quite active for you in one or multiple areas of your life. Usually the people with the brown eyes have the more most resource compared to other eye colors. They have the easiest time replenishing their resource. They have the easiest time accumulating resource, like accumulating energy. So the brown color is very absorbent. It is very, uh, you know, it absorbs the energy, by the way, very interestingly. The brown eyed people are able to both absorb the energy and the frequencies of Mother Gaia, planet Earth, as well as the sun and solar consciousness. Interesting. I'm not 100% sure what color my eyes are. My mother actually has green eyes and my dad has like really blue eyes and most of my family they have either blue or gray eyes but hold on let me see i think they're brown and don't mind this uh mark right here this is actually a birthmark what color are your eyes maybe that tells a story about you maybe you have more power than you realize because your eyes are brown <laughs> You heard what happened with like Cat Williams just now, right? He had an interview and he was like breaking everything down with like the Illuminati and all yeah, that yeah. shit. So pretty much what he said was if you want to know if somebody's getting like in the Illuminati or being tested is a lot of black comedians, they put them in a dress. Cat Williams said that. Damn, there's an edit. And you can look for it right now. Almost every single black comedian has put on a dress. Now, one of them being Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart even made a joke about it. Yo, I'll never be put in a dress. I'll never be put in a dress. This and that. Fam, Kevin heart ended up in a dress really yeah why though so it's part of what they call like a humiliation, humiliation. Yeah, ritual yeah. right if you look back at every single comedian especially the ones that were popping for their generation yeah when they're on their way up that's when they they make them do it now one of the biggest ones being dave Chappelle. dave Chappelle didn't he uh. didn't but that was when he had to leave hollywood remember mm. because he he knew like there's something going on yeah yeah dave Chappelle disappeared for years he said this in an interview he was in for a movie and a, a studio like writer came to him like yeah. oh dave blah blah all right we have a new skit for you you're gonna do this you're gonna do this and you're gonna do an address and he's like what? what are you talking about and he just ended up leaving like no nah, i'm not doing it it's holly weird bro is it a part of initiation for illuminati or is it just a 
degrade to yourself to become famous because that seems to be the running thing like most of these people are just highly famous people that are very wealthy because of what they do for entertainment so i don't know if this is necessarily an, an initiative to the illuminati i just think that the writers find it to be a really funny thing to see a man in a dress and i mean i i don't necessarily doubt it i think it is pretty funny as well but i i don't think i'd be able to do it for entertainment purposes like that on a media scale Try telling the truth in social settings. So when someone invites you to a party, instead of coming up with a fake excuse that you both know is a fake excuse, just say, I don't want to go really fuck with you. <laughs> um, and if someone like says, Hey, can you, uh, you know, help me move? Be like, I don't want to. It's very freeing because the thing is, is that like their response is on them. And if I just, I try and anchor myself to truth. If I just tell the truth and state the facts, I'm good with me. Because I had an exchange recently where I said that. I said, would you have preferred that I've lied to you? And the guy just like, <laughs> I was like, so you would prefer that I lie? I will not be associated with someone who would prefer that I lie to them. Because it makes my life difficult. Because then I'd have to lie, which then would breach one of my my values. I, I had someone who um, recently was like, hey, um, hey, if you need anything, you know, let me know how I can help. I'd be like, you don't mean that. Because if I actually need something, you will not help. And so it's really uncomfortable for a lot of people because it, it breaks a lot of social norms. But I think that learn it's kind of like the hundred no's. Like it's just being comfortable with the truth. And the truth is one of the, the scariest, ugliest things. You know, like, why don't you want to go on another day with me? I don't like you. You're not worthy. <laughs> but like people are so uncomfortable with that. And I I've just tried to shed bullshit as much as I could for my life. And it's just made thinking a lot easier and also dealing with relationships a lot easier because you also, by shedding social niceties, when you do also state the truth, when I say, I think you fucking killed that, people know it fucking carries weight because you don't just say that. And so I would say most of my team, for example, if I pay a compliment, they know that I mean it. And I don't have to say like, hey, I, like if I'm being honest, I really feel you know, like I don't have to, I don't like, and it makes your words mean what you say. And I think that is like, I, I, I aspire to be a man who, when I say things, people know that I mean them. And I think a way to do that is to stop saying things that I don't mean. And so I'm trying to cut as much of the words that are niceties and things that I don't mean and are nonsensical and bullshit that I've been taught to say in this social situation. When someone says, that makes sense? I say, no, it doesn't make any sense. People are like, oh, because when someone says makes sense at the end of a sentence, we are trained to just nod and say, yeah, yeah, even though if you didn't even process it. But if I don't think it makes sense, I say, no, I don't think it makes sense or no, I don't understand. And again, you don't want to look stupid, but looking stupid in the moment so that you can better understand something makes you not look stupid for the rest of your life when you actually understand it. And so I've just, that has been a huge effort of mine is to make, make words great again. <laughs> and words mean what they mean again. Yeah. And I, and I, and I really, I, I aspire to do that with my writing and, I, and especially in my social relationship because time is so valuable and we have so, so little of it. And I don't want to waste any of it pretending to be someone or say things that I don't mean. I just, I know so many people that'll tell you, oh yeah, I'll do something and they never do it because truly they didn't want to do it and they just didn't want to say no. And I have a lot of friends that respect me because I will tell you no if it's something that I just do not want to do. And they appreciate that because it's not like this false hope that I'm going to do something that you asked because I just straight up told you I'm not going to do it. Because of said reasons, I'll never say no because I just don't want to. I will tell you no I'm not interested in doing it. It's just not something I feel comfortable doing. Or I'll say, oh, yeah, I just don't want to do this because it just doesn't sound fun to me. And I'll easily say, ah, oh, nah, that's not for me. And people are fine with it. It, it. There's certain ways you can phrase things to make it not come off rude. But it will surprise you on how many people get taken aback when you tell them a direct answer to something they were expecting a neutral or agreeing response to like if you say oh no i'm not really interested in doing that when it was a scenario that they were expecting you to say yeah because they asked it it will throw some people off do any of you experience this or are you guys up front leave a comment let me know
Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this every day. And if you see this graph, you'll see that 15% of the viewers that watch my videos are subscribed, while a whopping 80% plus are not subscribed to my channel but keep coming back to watch more of my videos. We will not get to immortality, we will get to something that maybe should be called a mortality. Immortality is that like your, your God, you can never die no matter what happens. Even if we solve cancer and Alzheimer and dementia and whatever, we will not get there. We will get to kind of a life without a definitive expiry date that you can live indefinitely. You can go every 10 years to a clinic and get yourself rejuvenated. But if a bus runs you over, or your airplane explodes, or a terrorist kills you, you're dead. And you're not coming back to life. Now, realizing that you have a chance to live forever, but if there is an accident, you die, this creates a level of anxiety and terror unlike anything that we know in our own lives. Being in that situation will be extremely anxious and miserable. Could you imagine being a mortal... I think that would be extremely rough and kind of scary because everything around you eventually will stop existing, but you will still be there. For example, if a giant meteorite hit Earth and it exploded the planet, everything's in bits and chunks, you're floating through space. You would forever be floating through space now for who knows how long. And or you could be obliterated into tiny little bits and pieces because of that meteorite, but you're still alive, just chunks of you floating around in space. That just doesn't sound fun to me. But being able to live forever and still have the capability of dying, that is a different story. Now, me personally, I do not think that it would cause me to have great anxiety or be anxious. I think that I would be able to accept that. What do you guys think? Would this be something that you would be interested in be able to do, like have your family, yourself be able to live forever, but still have the capabilities of dying through natural disasters and things like that? Or would you just rather live your normal life? It is February 28th, 29th, 28th, 29th. I have gotten me a better quality camera to catch this thing in the sky. And holy moly, I am scared. I'm scared, but I'm not going to trip because I've been catching this thing for a while now. It's very ominous. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. It's a huge face looking right down on us. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit brighter. There he is. There's the moon. Oh, I lost it. There it is. Let's see if I can get a better picture on the moon like it's supposed to. Is my hand in front of the thing or something? All right, here we go. Here we go. There it is. Look at that. Yep, there it is. There it is. The camera makes it so clear. There it is. So I've been following this a little bit more because this individual has some of the best face beside the moon content. I'm a little upset that this video was in an odd color. It's a shame because he said he's got a new camera that's a higher quality, but this isn't much of a better difference than his old videos, but it's still there and it still seems to be very convincing evidence that there's something up there beside the moon. I don't know if it's just in this area or if he's just a master CGIist because honestly, I, I really don't know if this is real or fake. It seems so genuine to me. And there is other videos out there floating around on the internet of showing this face around the moon, but their video quality is way worse. So I can't really, I don't, I don't really want to use that quality video because this is probably the better video for this type of content because this is pretty hard to tell if it's real or fake. What do you guys think? Or do you know that if this is real or fake? Because I'm interested in knowing because I don't know if I want to keep following the content if it's not real, but I haven't been proven otherwise. So let me know. In the documentary, you talk about some of the uh, UFO technology. The metal is so pure it cannot be replicated. Can you ex expound on that a little bit? Yeah, so we think, you know, if you're driving a car or flying on a Boeing 737 or whatever, we dig that 
stuff up, you know, aluminum and metal. We smelt it, refine it, roll it, put it together, rivets, welding, etc. An extraterrestrial vehicle and all its components are not made that way. They are made by creating a sort of an ultrasonic, very high-tech wave that pulls, let's call it the substrate, the elementals that are subatomic, together on, if you can visualize this, like almost like a blueprint in energy, and it materializes it. So it's seamless. The, even the, the parts that are in it, anything that's energy or electronic related is on a nanomolecular level entwined in it. So this is why it's very hard to study this stuff. I mean, it's not like taking apart a Soviet MIG or something. I, I know the men who worked on these projects. And I mean, you're dealing with really extraordinary, elegant, beautiful uh, material sciences and matter. And that's why the materials are so pure because they're not dug up and refined. They're actually assembled from this baseline uh, energy matter interface in, in space time. And the, I have a, you give it, make it real for you. There was a captain on a Navy contract vessel back in 62 or three. And before he died, he contacted me. Great guy. Um, and he had been, you know, they were testing the Atlas, uh, rockets that were intercontinental ballistic, but these didn't have nukes on them. They were testing the, the rocket and guidance systems back way back. I'm always interested in this kind of technology. I do believe if there are extraterrestrial life out there that they have the capability of manipulating atoms to create what they need. It, whether it's by nanotechnology, maybe they have droids that can fly around and grab uh, atoms to build whatever they need to build. I, I think that if there is extraterrestrial life, they have that type of technology. Now, we're so far from being able to grasp that technology, but I do think one day we will have those capabilities. Depending on how quantum computing works and if it can give us the code to be able to create something so small just to be able to manipulate atoms, that'll be a scary and impressive day when that happens. Can you see where the ringing in the ears has to do with the energy and adjusting the frequencies? They said, if you can't take it, just tell them, turn it down. It's a little too much energy. They'll always listen to you, but you have to ask. You have to ask anything. Turn it down. It's a little too much energy. That's what the ringing in the ears is. But all of these things don't happen at the same time. They'll be gradual. Last month, when we had these big shift that happened the um, beginning of the month and the middle of the month, I felt with the extreme um, dizziness. So I don't know if you felt these things or not. But if you know that's what it is, you just wait a day or so and your body adjusts and it levels out. So this is happening. You, you have no choice. You have to go through it anyway. You have to ride it out. How are you going to get out of it? We're in this big change right now. There's no way to get out of it. So just go along with it and ride it out. Everything's going to be fine. But anyway, we are, the Earths are separating and we're going into the new Earth and the old Earth as we move forward in time. So some of the symptoms that you may experience, high blood pressure, heart palpitations, where the heart gets to beating irregularly. But all of these things pass. Of course, they're frightening at the time, but they're passing as the body adapts to the different frequency. There's uh, dizziness is a big one. Depression is another one that's big. But they don't last very long. And then we have joint aches and pains and ringing in the ears. I just watched a video the other day about ringing in the ears, and I had a subscriber comment that it could be due to potential high blood pressure. And I thought that was really interesting because I do have high blood pressure, and that makes sense now. And then I had another subscriber say just to tell them to be quiet, just like how this individual did. So the next time I get that ringing in the ear, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be like, hey tone it down a little bit because this is nonsense. But I don't know if it's because we're actually phasing into another reality. I think that's a really cool concept if it is. But if that's the case, I've been going through multiple realities a lot in my life because it happens a lot. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is more plausible or do you think that this is kind of like hocus pocus? I kind of like the theory a little bit, to be honest. We landed on the moon. 
there was a, around that crater above where we landed, uh, there were multiple ET craft that were just hovering there watching. Yo, and that uh, is true. Up, That's 100%. Up. The Apollo mission was a militarized operation competing with the Soviet Union. And the space program ostensibly was really a proxy for the Cold War. That's the truth. So yeah. you're telling me when Buzz Aldrin stepped on the moon, he saw five extraterrestrial aircrafts. More than that. They knew beforehand. Well, and you can do what? Have you seen the picture they, they, of them at the press conference when they got back? Mm -hmm. they, you can tell. They're just like, yo, this... like We're freaked out. We're freaked yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, we yeah, want to yeah, yeah. say something. So what I invited Neil Armstrong to the Disclosure Project event at the National Press Club, and his really good friend of his, who was on my team, said he was informed that he, his wife, his kids, and his grandkids would all be killed if he did that. I mean, imagine the like, stress these guys are under. They've yeah. seen amazing stuff. I mean, you know, I've worked with hundreds of these men and women who've been in these projects, and they have a kind of PTSD. I do not know if I believe that they landed on the moon or not. I want to believe that they did. But do I think that those particular astronauts land on the moon? I kind of don't think they did. I really think that's why they are so nervous looking and, and like they have PTSD is because they're holding in one of the world's biggest lies that that just makes more sense to me than them going to the moon and then seeing aliens because they would talk about that they would eventually talk about that especially if their time is coming up because they're old they're gonna let that information go because they're gonna want the people to know I, I just feel like they never went to the moon that those particular astronauts were actors basically and we do have people that went to space and went on to the moon but those people weren't it i truly don't think that they were what do you guys think do you think that we did have astronauts actually go to the moon do you think those are the astronauts that went to the moon and that i'm just crazy or do you think that those are just actors and no one's gone to the moon or what is your complete belief leave a comment down below letting me know because i'm always interested in this topic a low vibrational being is just a being who is on the path to becoming high vibrational. And they just have an innocent tendency that when unexpected things happen, they turn inward, not towards themselves. They turn against themselves. And instead of supporting themselves, their inquiry becomes endless judgments and superstitions. And let's run towards the high vibration so I can get the hell away from this haunted house of my life. A low vibrational being is someone who has a tendency to think everything is happening against me or to me. And a high vibrational being says this is happening all for me, even if the way in which people are loving me is rather harsh, critical, and aggressive. A low vibrational being is just a being who is on the path to becoming high vibrational. And they just have an innocent tendency that when unexpected things happen, they turn inward, not towards themselves. They turn against themselves. And instead of supporting themselves, their inquiry becomes endless judgments and superstitions. And let's run towards the high vibration so I can get the hell away from this haunted house of my life. A low vibrational being is someone who has a tendency to think everything is happening against me or to me. And a high vibrational being says this is happening all for me even if the way in which people are loving me is rather harsh, critical, and aggressive. I've seen a lot of people that were extremely positive, and if you want to call that high vibration, that's cool, but I've seen some people that were extremely positive that had a little bit of a hiccup in their life, and it just impacted them negatively in such a way because they did it to themselves. They started thinking negatively and it brought them down to a low vibration or just a very negative space. And it, it really can, it can mess you up. So try to stay positive out there. I know there's a lot of people in this world that get down easily and you need to bring yourself back up into a higher vibration. So try your best. Hey guys, just a quick heads up. Okay, if you want to break the matrix, then you're going to have to reset all of your lines of thinking. So here's your rabbit hole for today. Enjoy. So dinosaurs died off 65 million years ago. Universally accepted in paleontology and archaeology. Yet, if you Google scientists, no, not Google. You're going to have to use some different type of search engine. I personally use the Brave because it's not censored. Uh, but if you look at scientists that have been fired 
for finding soft tissue in dinosaur bones, I think your eyes are going to be opened up to a whole different world on how many scientists have found soft tissue within dinosaur fossils and have disclosed it and then have been subsequently fired by their universities. Now, the reason for that is, is, uh, you know, if the dinosaurs died off 65 million years ago and soft tissue only lives 4,000 years, we might have to rethink some things. I, I'm not saying that it's valid information. I'm just saying that scientists have been fired for disclosing that they're finding soft tissue within dinosaur fossils. There's a little archaeology rabbit hole for you for today. Break the matrix. Have a great day. I find this pretty interesting. I don't know if it's true or not. I did not do my research to see if this information is actual facts. But it did leave me to theorize about a couple of things. Like, for one, what if the Great Flood is actually a real thing and Noah's Ark was real, which I have some information about Noah's Ark on some of these videos we'll see in the future. But uh, what if Noah's Ark was real and he was there to harbor all the normal animals and, and not the extremely hostile ones such as dinosaurs or dragons and things like that and the great flood wiped out all of the dinosaurs that's a pretty cool little theory to think about and that would help make sense of a lot of things i think what's your thoughts on this do you think that maybe dinosaurs existed within that time frame of four thousand years or do you think that maybe this is just false information what you're talking about you have no idea what is real. And we all we all just kind of shrugged it off. And I, I kind of winked at the two security guards knowingly that, oh, yeah, you know, the, the doctor's, you know, probably just another UFO nut, but that's okay. He's a nice <laughs> enough guy. So anyways, we find ourselves out at Homestead 2. Smartphone malfunctioning. Everyone's feeling these physical effects. My brother's are feeling uneasy enough that they want to leave and they leave. They're they're happier driving and sitting at the airport for hours until I tell them that we're ready to fly back. And uh and I'm finding the whole thing interesting. Well, as we're as we're all discussing kind of the history of Skinwalker Ranch and the homesteads, you know, we proceed to kind of get our phones out to take some pictures. I felt like it was a good photo opportunity. And lo and behold, my phone's dead. It had previously been at 80% charge. My phone's completely dead. Eric Bard's phone that had recorded that where he had screen captured the, uh, the anomaly, the, the strange colors and flashing was dead. The others' phones were dead. So we, you know, we didn't have our, our cameras. So I thought, darn, well, we better go take them back to, to the ranch house and plug them in and let them charge up. But we don't want to disrupt our day because of it. It was very frustrating. And so we took the phones back, put them in chargers, and then we proceeded to, to return back out to the old homesteads. This time we drove all the way back out to Homestead 3, which is beyond Homestead 2. And it's a single structure. It's, 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 uh, it's pretty haunting looking. And, uh, we pull up around the backside of the structure. This is October, October, uh, 14th of 2016. And we all pile out and we all walk around the other side. And again, we're looking at the landscape and everyone's visiting and having a good experience. I mean, my brothers have returned, have left and returned to the airport awaiting a call, you know, hours later and uh and we're just visiting and after about 10 minutes i ask well where's where's george the big guy the the security uh the six foot six security um professional that uh that was there was, wasn't present and for some reason uh, we kind of lost track of him and everyone said well when we when we all piled out of the uh the open air polaris you know utv the ranger, you know, no one really paid attention. I said, well, let me go try to find him. So I proceed to walk around to the back of the, uh, the homestead, homestead three to find George. And right as I'm coming around the corner in this, this grass area where we'd parked it and the, the vehicle being off in the distance, 
it was as if something cupped my ears. It was all of the, all of my hearing was, was impacted. It was as if I walked into a, into a soundproof room. If you ever been into an anechoic chamber or a soundproof room? I have. And that sensation, the only, the only thing you can do to simulate it right now is by, by, you know, cupping your ears. It's like a frequency change. Yeah. All of the ambient noise disappears. And I thought it was the strangest thing. It was the strangest sensation. And then I see off in the distance standing fully upright, this six foot six giant of a man in the back of this UTV. And I thought that's odd. So I yell his name, George. And I can hear kind of muffled. It's almost like yelling underwater. I thought that was strange. And I, I proceed to, to walk to get closer and he's not responding. And as I near the vehicle and shout his name again, he's, he's standing upright with his eyes closed. And right as I'm nearing the vehicle, all of the ambient noise, all of the sound comes back. Man, let me tell you, if I ever get an, an opportunity to go to Skinwalker Ranch, I'm pretty sure it's in Utah. I am going because I want to do my own test. I want to experience these anomalies and phenomenons. I really want to know what it's like. But man, let me tell you, if I knew phones died out there, I'm taking a generator. Even if I have to tote that thing with me, I'm taking a generator, a power cord, and a bunch of energy supplies to be able to keep my stuff charged because I think that you need to be well equipped for these scenarios, especially when people talk about this kind of stuff consistently. Like, come on, why aren't you taking battery packs and and different forms of energy producing devices to keep your electronics charged at all times. I would love to have this experience. I would like to do this. Leave a comment on whether or not you guys would be willing to go out there to Skinwalker Ranch and, and see what you can find. Or would you just be too afraid to do it? Me personally, I'm ready for it. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, please look in the description down below. There's links to each one as in order that we watch them in. And with that being said, have a good day.